So I, I think a lot of you are familiar with that. But let me read this to you. This is from an article that appeared a few years ago. Uh, there's been a, uh, a forward now put onto that article to say that this person does not believe in intersectionality, even though the article was about intersectionality. Though I'm a marginalized African-American man within white male-dominated evangelical movements, Southern Baptist and Reformed, I'm still part of the privileged male majority in my Christian tribe. My brown, marginalized identity intersects with my male identity. Though my African-American identity has caused me to lose certain privileges and has caused me certain traumatic experiences of racism, both in the SBC and in the broader evangelical movement, my male identity affords me certain privileges that are unavailable for many black and brown women in white male-dominated evangelical Christianity. Dr. Lindsay. Hey. Thanks, Ryan. Possibly if you could just give me your initial impressions of that statement. I have a lightsaber. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You didn't know, did you? Okay, so um, <laughs> this person you said doesn't believe in intersectionality? This is, inter okay. This is when I just spoke a few moments ago and I said that one of the requirements of the metaphysic of systemic power is that you have to in constantly engage, and in fact, that's a direct quote from critical race educators, positionality must constantly be engaged. When I said you have to engage your positionality with respect to the systems of power, that is what this statement is. This is the waffling that begins to situate that person and say, this is how I stand versus this axis of power, this is how I stand versus that axis of systemic power. And you can see, speaking directly, first of all, my marginalized identity intersects with my privileged identity. This person doesn't believe in intersectionality, that's ludicrous. It's, it's in black and white in front of me. But this is the process of declaring your position within that intersecting set of systems of power as described by what Patricia Hill Collins, black feminist, one of the early critical race theorists, called the matrix of domination. And this person is saying, this is what I have authority to speak upon, meaning I can speak from my marginalized identity as a African American man within a white dominated evangelical movement because as a oppressed person, he has access to understand oppression and therefore can speak authoritatively exactly as Michael said at the beginning. He is an expert on what it's like to be black in a white system. On the other hand, he's acknowledging that he is a man in a patriarchal system and therefore he is not an expert to speak about issues of sex or gender. So this is exactly the engagement with the metaphysic that I was speaking about just a few minutes ago. Dr. Bogosian, any comments on that? Yeah, I think uh, Dr. Lindsay said it all. I'll say something that's a little different. Every society, every civilization almost, has had a dominant moral value that has arisen in that age. In this society, that is intersectionality. In Homer's time, it was uh, strength in Voltaire's time it was humor and Aristotle's time it was the Athenian gentleman and it goes on and on. It's always interesting to me when I see something like this that this is a wave that someone has caught on, someone's cognitions has latched onto. One could be very deeply concerned about anthropogenic global warming or the plastic in the ocean or you could be concerned about any one of a number of things but right now, this is the idea that's in vogue. And there is social privilege and currency to be gained by advocating this idea. My friend Andy No said something to me. But when I read this statement, and you, you alluded to it, Mug, before, when I read things like this, I'm always thinking, is this really a statement of identity or is this a political statement? He said when someone puts their pronouns in their bio, it's not because they want you to know what their gender is. It's a political statement. It's virtue signaling. They're virtue signaling to you their position. So when I read this, not very well written if I may be forthright with you, when I, when I read this, I think this is really a political statement plus everything that was just said. Uh, if you'd Might like I to, add yes, yes. Sorry. So 
This is a actually fairly typical example that you run into in philosophical um, courses at least. Um, but when I was a kid, it was a means of bullying people for fun. Have you ever heard of the question, you know, have you stopped beating your wife yet? <laughs> because if you say yes, you imply that you beat your wife. And if you say no, you imply that you still beat your wife. You'll notice that it's begging the question is the philosophical error here. It is the fallacy. So you'll notice that he says um, that this is a white male dominated movement twice in this, this statement. This isn't a very long statement. He says that twice. This is something you have to understand about this metaphysic. A metaphysic is obviously something that people are taking kind of, uh, taking it on wholly as though it's a, it's a known fact that goes beyond even necessarily evidence. And so they begin with the assumption that the systemic power is there. Why do you engage your positionality so that you can speak into it? And then when you find an example, you say, well, I've experienced, says my brown marginalized identity uh, has, though my African American identity has caused me to lose certain privileges. So he's speaking from that expertise. If he were to give some examples of that, those would be then taken as proof of the thing he assumed from the outset. So you have to realize that the systems of power here are presuppositionally assumed. Right. And, and I want to build on that. So in science, what we try to do is we try to disconfirm hypotheses. Someone will have a hypothesis and we'll try to disconfirm it. Exactly what you said is operative here. How do you, discon how do you disconfirm this? But even if you don't disconfirm, any attempt at disconfirmation is itself an, in an example of co confirmatory evidence. So there is no disconfirmation. The very thought of disconfirmation is confirmatory. It's, it's, it's called a Kafka trap. You saying you're not racist is evidence of the fact that you're racist. There's literally nothing you can do to win. They've constructed, they've made the rules of the game to make it impossible. Anything further on that? Yeah, this person is an intersectionalist, period. Uh, no if, debate. If you'd like to see this statement for yourself in, the, in its article form, you can look on, uh, just Google the witness, uh, intersectionality, Dr. Jarvis Williams from Southern Baptist Theological Seminary.